morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Glad to see you on time for this service for the daylight saving. (laughs) We are glad to have everyone here. I am Emily Allen. I am the liturgist this morning. I want to give a a special thanks to our uh, team who are helping make this worship service possible. We have Reverend Ray as our speaker. Uh, Gaun provided the altar flowers for the first time and they are lovely. Uh, Alice and Janice are our greeters. Grant is on piano. Helen did the fellowship tea. Herb, Brent, and Brad are in the back uh, on doing the Zoom and the AV. And, uh, you know, we don't list our um, acolytes who light the candles, but I appreciate their help as well in getting us started in worship. So um, welcome to you who are in person. Welcome to you who are watching online. We are glad that you are part of this community. And with that, I would ask if there are any announcements. Good morning, everyone. Wasn't it nice to have one hour extra sleep this morning? (laughs) Uh, the first announcement is that mask is optional now, but we just want to continue to do our best to protect one another. So if you're not feeling well, please consider joining us online. And let us just continue to do our best. Um, the first announcement is that last week we had a really fun Halloween Sunday and trunk or treat. It was really, really nice. Everyone looked so perfect. So I, I have prepared a highlight video, so I hope you enjoy this video. I just want to thank everyone for participating, and uh, especially Reverend John, the math scientist, and Kelly, the witch, for leading the fun time. Thank you so much. 
Um, next announcement. So there, there will be a class concert for families. The idea is that, you know, there are some kind of bias against classic music nowadays. It's so boring. You have to dress up for the concert. I mean, they are passionate about uh, letting the people know that class can be fun and it's beautiful. So uh, we have two musicians coming. Next slide. So pianist uh, Hyunji and uh, uh, cellist August. They are very distinguished musicians, um, but they're passionate about uh, sharing the music and also the background stories, the fun stories about classic music. So if you are interested, please sign up and also get the words out. And uh, I think this will be a good opportunity for you <clears throat> to invite your coworkers, friends, and neighbors. Just come and uh, see what's going on at the church and enjoy the music. Next, um, so Palo Alto Buddhist Temple is go, is having a fundraiser. You know, they always support us, so I would encourage you to go and enjoy their fundraiser as well. It's uh, November 11th, this Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. So the holiday gift drive is back. Um, there's two ways of donating. Uh, so we'll have physical donations. I don't... They're not the wish cards are not here. Not here yet. Uh, so coming. hopefully next they're week yeah. they will be in the narthex. You can walk in and take one. Those gifts will be due December third, and in the next e newsletter there should be a link to a page on the Family Giving Tree website, the Aldersgate page, and you can donate as well there. And those will be due by January twelfth. So you have two dates, whichever one you want to choose. Um, it's a great cause. They give out gifts to those in need and we really hope you would support it good morning all so um this year we are um reaching out and wanting to help in the community um to help our community uh for, with a food drive and so this event is coming up on november 18th um, it's a fun opportunity or an, a nice way to help out our community in this time of um, November and thinking of Thanksgiving. And um, you do need to sign up on the website. So there's a link that will connect you with our Aldersgate team. And thank you for those who have signed up. Um, we're looking for a few more. So um, yeah, we can take a maximum of 20 people. So I think we've got about halfway full. Um, I think the minimum age is 12. 12. And um, so anyone 12 and up, or like 13 and up, um, please come on out, out and help um, uh, help people in need. It's a really good cause. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the, uh, our sign-up sheet is in front of my office as well. Um, next, so during this month, <clears throat> can you believe that it's November already? My gosh, right? <laughs> uh, so during this time of uh, reflection and Thanksgiving, we are going to have Platy Drive and Stewardship Campaign, our annual stewardship campaign. We used to call it Pony Express. So uh, during this week, the Finance Committee will meet and you will be receiving Platy letter and Platy card. And uh, please consider your giving for next year. Uh, and during this uh, month, we are going to have a photo exhibition on the hallway. So when you go to Fellowship Hall, please look at those wonderful photos of our, our ministries throughout the year. Um, next, uh, and we are going to have Thanksgiving Sunday, November 19th. So uh, Sujin and I, it's, it's our Aldersgate tradition, right? The pastor, we don't know how to cook turkey, okay? But we will prepare something, something for, for you to enjoy. Uh, next, so and charge conference for us is scheduled November 26, 2 to 4 p.m. I know it's Sunday afternoon, but uh, our DS Samuel Hong will come and officiate the meeting. So please uh, mark your schedule. Next, so today is the first Sunday of November, so we are going to sing happy birthday for those who whose birthday is in November, but, but I just want to uh, <clears throat> shout out that today's Judy Wong's birthday <laughs> and and also Rosemary Shea's uh, 97th birthday is coming up this Tuesday so <clears throat> so I'd like to welcome the Shea family thank you for coming and worshiping with us yes Iwami Iwami family Yes, yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you for worshiping with us. Is there any anyone else whose birthday is in November? 
Well, close. Oh, Leon. Yes. What is your birthday? November 10th. Wow, it's tomorrow, right? Is it? No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> okay, prison, prison. Yes, happy birthday. Anyone else? Ed. Ed, when is your birthday? 14. Wow. And Gail? 17. Wow, we have a lot. And Steve. Yay. When is your birthday? 28. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Kathy. Wow. Wow, there are so many, so many people. Happy birthday, everyone. So we're going to sing happy birthday. Uh, our tradition, is we, can, we can name all of them. So we're going to say happy birthday, I love you. Okay, sounds good. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, I love you. I love you, everyone. Happy birthday to you. Yay. I invite you to settle where you are and take three deep breaths at your own pace. Would you join me in the call to worship? God's grace has always been in abundance. We give thanks for God's love. Amen. Please stand if you are able and join in singing our hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Now for our song of centering, you may be seated. Uh, our song of centering is Goodness of God. Good morning again. For the song of centering this month, I picked this song, Goodness of God. 
Um, actually, in times like this, when there, there are so many wars and conflicts around this world, it feels almost wrong to sing goodness of God. You know, instead, we should shout out, like, where is God, right? Mm -hmm. But I imagine this song is a kind of a poetry and confession of someone who's going through a difficult time because he sings goodness of God in a pretty sad melody. Um, when I look back on my life, there, there were times, there were really difficult times in my life. But um, when I look back on the whole journey, I cannot but confess that God's goodness has been running after me. So, so please uh, listen to this song as uh, someone's confession, someone's poetry. And I want to thank Leticia for singing with me today and Grant for playing piano. Thank you.
So today was the end of daylight saving time. I'll tell you a little secret. I said something about it to Pastor Ray before we started worship this morning, and he said, oh, it was? <laughs> he looked at his smartwatch, which had automatically changed, and he looked at his cell phone, which had automatically changed, and he thought, he said, oh, well, that's why I got up at 6 a.m. <laughs> so I was curious, um, did you do anything special with your extra hour this morning? Did you do an hour of yoga? Did you, you extra sleep? I was gonna ask if anyone did extra credit homework for an hour, no. <laughs> extra sleep, that's, that's certainly one good way to use it. Um, it made me think about time and how we can use time rather than just go through time without doing anything about it. Um, John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist movement and his practice was to get up at 4 a.m. every day to pray. And uh, I never get up at 4 a.m. to pray. He also used time wisely when he was traveling from one place to another place to preach or to meet with people, he would read the Bible. But the thing is, he wasn't sitting in the back of a car, he was riding on horseback while also reading the Bible. So very impressive, I don't know how safe it was, but again, he was trying to use his time wisely by reading the Bible and traveling from place to place, or by getting up at 4 a.m. so that he could pray and have time to talk to God. So um, I, I don't get up at 4 a.m., but it was a good reminder to me that spending time deliberately for prayer or deliberately to spend time with your friends or deliberately to have dinner with your family, there are things that we can do to make sure that we are using time the way we want to and for the good purposes we have in mind and not just let it go by while we're sitting in front of the TV or taking a nap on the sofa. You know, we can do things to be very, very deliberate about how we use our time, including the one hour that we had today. Even if you already used it for sleep, well, maybe you could use an extra hour today for something else to, uh, to say, I'm going to use this time on purpose and not just let it slip by past me. So that's what I wanted to share with you today and hope that you can use time deliberately today and the rest of the week. So would you pray with me? Holy God, you made time and you made us to go through that time and use it wisely. We ask that you be with us as we pick what to do with each hour of the day, as we pick what we do with each day of this week. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank you for joining me. You are welcome to go to Sunday school. You're welcome to stay with us here in church. And for the rest of you, if you would turn to the prayer of the people. Please read with me. Gracious Lord, help us to acknowledge your love in our lives. You cared for us through your son, Jesus, and continue to pour your love on us. Guide us this day. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, Emily. I know what I did with my, my hour. I just slept. I didn't even realize that the daylight savings happened either. So what a glorious time. I'm gonna turn it over to Reverend Ray to share um, uh, some prayer requests and prayer updates real quick before we uh, jump into the list. But if you have any prayer requests or updates, uh, please raise your hand here in the sanctuary or lift them up in the chat room on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend John. Uh, just quick update on our some of our members. Um, again, happy birthday, everyone, uh, whose birthday is in November. Um, welcome back, Kat and Glenn. I hope you had a wonderful time in New York. And welcome back, Anne. Uh, she came back from uh, Japan. Uh, um, and I, I learned that Kathy is in Korea now. Um, I'm so jealous. <laughs> Midori is in Japan, and Lori went to see Camden in New Jersey. So um, we pray for travel mercies for all those who are traveling. We heard the good news last week that Noah, Noah Yase is okay, um, and he's home by now. So we give thanks to God. Um, 
uh, Reverend David and Youngjin went back to Hawaii this week. They flew back because they want to stay there for the winter, and they will, they will come back in the spring. But we pray for their health and well-being there. I I talked to them yesterday, uh, even though there is a volcano eruption, but he's he's okay. I mean, there are a lot of um, lizard poops in the house and <laughs> dust, but uh, they're okay. So we continue to pray for their well-being. Um, uh, Amy Chow is doing well, and, and Dave and Amy just wanted to tell us that they really appreciate our prayers. Uh, uh, you know, because of the broken bone, she's going, she's having a hard time. But in the midst of everything, they're grateful. And they, uh, Dave said that like, our prayer is working for them. So um, I just wanted to share that. So please continue to keep uh, Amy in your prayers. Um, Iris Law was going to come today she's there right so yeah you just want to welcome her back um, yes yes uh, for those who didn't know she uh, she's going through cancer and uh, she's done with chemo but um, <clears throat> Tuesday she uh, she's scheduled to have a surgical biopsy to see if the cancer is spread or not so please uh, keep I'll continue to keep her in your prayers. Um, she's uh, she's going to have surgical biopsy on Tuesday. And I know we all want to jump in and hug her, and right? But uh, she's still immunocompromised. So please be careful and just say hi and send peace and love, you know, uh, on her way, positive thoughts on her way. Um, and also we uh, heard the sad news that uh, Kyoshi's mom, Kyoshi's mother passed away this week. So please uh, keep... Um, Amanda and Kirishi and, and the two girls in your prayers. Uh, 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 and they, they lost their grandma, so please uh, continue to pray for the family. Thank you, Reverend Ray. We will be, uh, yes, holding the Okamoto family um, in prayer for the passing of, uh, forgive me, Shigeno Okamoto. Okay. May we be in a space of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we lift up to you those who are on our hearts and minds this day. We lift up to you Annette Marshall, Lynn Carthus, Amy Shaw and her continued recovery, Amy Wake, Andrew Cheng, Andrew and Eli Morris and their parents, Sid Hadasaka, Chloe Gong, Dale Schwab, David Nakamura, Reverend Gary Barbary, Ginger Powell, Gwen Yoshimura, Harue Ng, Iris Law and her upcoming biopsy, Jay Sasagawa, Camilla Young, Kikuko Niera, Kit Nishira, Leah Haratani, Lester Ng, Mike Okagaki, Robert Chin, Roy Chung, Steve Keller, Sherry Meredith, Wendy Mizuno, and all those we have lifted up, not with our lips, but with our hearts this day. God, we ask that you continue to pour your love and grace on each and every one of these persons. And as we hold them on our hearts and minds this day, we ask that you continue to walk with them in their journey of life, to support them and care for them. God, we ask that you also hold the Okamoto family for the passing of Shigeno Okamoto. That it's always hard to lose someone we love. And we are grateful that you hold them in your arms and walk with us in our grief. God, for all the folks that we have on our minds, God, we are grateful that you are a God of presence and understanding and that you are a God of love who continues to find ways to bring your kingdom here on earth amidst war, violence, disaster, and conflict. You find ways to show your love through peace, through compassion, your generosity and grace. And so God, we ask 
that you continue to show grace to us and to the world. To show grace in ways that heals hearts and brings wholeness. God, we ask that you continue to be present with us. We lift up all these folks and all these things on our hearts and minds along with the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. ushers come forward. Bountiful God, we thank you for the blessings you have poured out on us, and in turn, we share the blessings that we have for the good work in our community. This morning's scripture lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Thank you, Emily. Um, just like she said, um, I had no idea the time changed this morning, <laughs> even though we talked about it yesterday. I thought it was somehow, I thought it was, it was going to be next week. But anyways, thank you, Emily. Um, we are entering into the Thanksgiving season. Can you believe that? The Halloween is already over, and soon it will be Thanksgiving, soon it will be Christmas, soon it will be end of this year. Uh, this week, uh, during because it was Halloween, Sujin and I took the kids out for trick-or-treating, and then we were just talking about, like, it seems like 
uh, to, Halloween came a lot faster than last year. We were like, we talked about like, what happened? Like, why is Halloween already? <laughs> Do you feel the same way? Well, whether we like it or not, whether we are prepared for this or not, we are in the season of Thanksgiving. We are in the, we're in November. We're in the season of reflection. Um, when we are called to count our blessings and reflect on what we've been doing throughout the year and prepare ourselves for the next year. Therefore, for the month of November, we prepared this uh, sermon series based on Isaiah chapter 43. Could you show the next slide and give you a report on each ministry? Uh, the idea was that the three essential ministries of a UMC are care ministry, education ministry, and worship ministry. So with uh, Reverend John and Kelly and myself, we made three teams and we've been working together. So today we will report to you about uh, care ministries uh, throughout the year. So now I'd like to invite Reverend John and to share his reflection and report with us. Thank you, Reverend Ray. I, as you already shared, that um, I, I oversee uh, many of the care minis caring ministries that um, pretty much promote caring within our congregation and caring into the community. I would love to take credit, but I want to be very, very clear. My report is a report of gratitude to the many folks who put all of this together. Uh, because of my time constraints and being pulled in many different directions, um, I, I really am very hands off. And, and sometimes I, I can't even make it to the events. It's the congregation folks and the leaders who really do an amazing job on all these ministries. And, and they've been doing it for years, as I'll, I'll quickly share. Reverend Ray made a quick slideshow. And, and definitely, I want to uh, give a lot of time and space for that. But uh, Herb, if you can go to the next slide. Just real quickly, Koyukai, just want to say a quick thank you to Lori, Judy, happy birthday, Judy, um, and, and Grace for leading this Koyukai senior ministry for the last 17 years. So. Um, they shared with me and I've seen a lot of photos and, and just reports of how um, they've been leading uh, monthly events for the senior adults here at um, Aldersgate, uh, a lot of them, including Ben and Joy, as you'll see in the slides, um, but it's just been a really amazing and, and great ministry for those folks. Uh, Mimi has been caring for 25 seniors um, who are all over outside of the Aldersgate uh, community. And they're, they're pretty much unable to come here into the sanctuary, um, but um, uh, um, mo most of them, not, not all of them. And, and some of them are not local. There are actually some, a few are on the East Bay. They're, they're all, all over the area. And what Mimi does and, and her senior care team is prepare gift packages for them. She prepares 25 gift uh, care gift packages um, all from contributions and donations uh, from from folks here in the congregation and then finds volunteers to send them out to uh, those 25 folks and so just want to lift up a word of thanks to Mimi and her team um, a lot of a lot of clapping and applause for for this morning uh, also want to give a big shout out and thanks to Herb for uh, leading uh, the Easter breakfast and the salmon dinner. The Easter breakfast is an Aldersgate tradition. And the last couple of years, we've been uh, donating the proceeds uh, from those, um, from those, that, that meal uh, to, to folks in need. I think this most recent one was to um, the folks over in Ukraine, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah. Um, what Herb shared with me uh, very quickly was that the goal was to start bringing people in person. And so I think, uh, uh, as Herb said it, food is a great way to do that. And so we've seen a lot of folks come out for the Easter breakfast and the salmon dinner, but also it's been a really great thing to have people come and volunteer and help out. And so that is some of the things that Herb's been seeing and, and looking forward to finding ways to do more recruiting in the upcoming year. So thank you, Herb. 
Now, this next one, I'm taking no credit. Dave Shea has been leading our backpack drive and our holiday wish drive for many, many years. I think he's been one of the few folks who've been doing a caring ministry throughout the COVID season as the backpack drive and the holiday wish drive moved online. They had online options. And so Dave was able to continue that. But also, um, he's been uh, not necessarily always doing it himself, even though he's the point person. Nico and Joanne have always been helping out with doing that as well. And um, it's been an amazing ministry. Everybody keeps coming to donate items and gifts. And uh, I think it's a great way to just kind of be mindful of the surrounding communities. And so grateful that you guys will be doing this again uh, this coming year. So thank you. <laughs> Fellowship Night led by Joanne, Michelle, and Paul have been our, our kind of entryways into the congregation. Um, it's it's a, a kind of a quarterly event. We do this about three or four times a year where folks come and gather. They bring a potluck item and sometimes an item that's um, uh, just kind of learning more about or decorate or just have fun. Um, you'll see in the, the slideshow that there's um, um, the last two fellowship uh, events had to do with um, a pumpkin succulent craft, and then the um, uh, learning about uh, propagating succulents too. So you'll see those in the slides. Um, we we do have our tradition of doing one around Christmas time. So there's more information to follow if if and when that comes up. Um, so just keep your eyes on the lookout on the e newsletter. But thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Paul, for leading this fellowship fellowship night ministry. And Shimakawa is not here, but uh, she is also one where I give 100% credit. She leads our, our um, it's a week long food, um, food um, making and delivering ministry called Hotel de Zinc. We partner up with other local United Methodist churches to uh, provide uh, evening meals for, for homeless in our community. And for one week, um, Anne Shimakawa organizes and helps with um, kind of preparing meals for, for that week-long event. One thing that Anne wanted me to lift up is that she's looking for new folks and volunteers. So please, if when, when you see that come out um, sometime around February-ish, please be on the lookout. The, the volunteer signups actually go really, really quickly. So just be ready to go with your potluck dish and, and, and yeah. So let's lift up word of thanks to Anne. <laughs> Spring Bazaar. Janice, I'm going to give you all, all the credit on this one, too. I think it's an amazing thing of how folks come together to, to just provide a, a lovely ministry. You know, there, there's some subtle things about it. It is one of our church's fundraisers. But I also want to just put in a little blip that it is. It does carry a lot of the culture and community of Aldersgate as well. How many of you have practiced making manju, or even know what manju is? So, so I share that because it's one of those things. When you mention the word, you recognize the story, you recognize the event, and that's one of the beautiful things of that that subtle fundraiser slash community caring event of just remembering some of the small things that bring us all together as a community. You'll see it in the slides and, and I'm sorry, it's gonna make your mouth water. Um, but uh, yes, uh, just wanna lift up a word of thanks to Janice and Corey, who will be stepping in as the leader for this upcoming Spring Bazaar. Now, I, I'm pointing the finger at you, Steve, but I've heard that um, the life ministry is actually a fellowship based uh, ministry um, kind of birthed out of, out of its own self of wanting to do things for I, I'm going to put a label on it. Sorry. Uh, the late uh, baby boomers, early Gen Xers uh, ministry of our congregation, um, I think. For, for folks, if you have any thoughts or ideas or just want to gather, um, please uh, let me know. I think life, life um, 
uh, fellowship ministry is something that I think a lot of folks want to see get off the ground come 2024. And uh, I do want to put a quick shout out. Reverend Ray does a lot of behind the scenes caring for folks outside of our congregation. And I, I work alongside with Reverend Ray trying to help and catch a lot of the folks who I don't want to say, but I don't want to forget either that might not be able to come and interact with with us. So instead of them coming to the church, we go to them. And um, I think in conversations and text messages between Reverend Ray and I, I think it'd be a beautiful thing to see more folks wanting to step up and make this more of a team effort from the congregation as well. And so that is a very quick report of all the various caring ministries. Uh, one thing I do want to share is that that doesn't necessarily mean we're done. There's a lot more things we can do and would love to do. Uh, and it's spurred by ideas. A lot of these things were spurred on by ideas, need, or seeing that there is care and compassion needed in the community. So if you're feeling your heart being pulled in any different way, please see me see any of the many folks you guys clapped for and, and we would love to have you be part of this care team ministry thank you very much
イエーイ<笑> !We did a lot. I, had, I picked out 110 photos out of thousands of photos. <laughs> it was, it was hours, of, hours of work, but uh, uh, to make this four minute, four minute, 30 seconds of video, but this doesn't tell the whole story. We did a lot. Even, even in the midst of pandemic, we've been doing a lot, and I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful for everyone's leadership, dedication, sacrifice, and generosity. Uh, without without your contribution, it, it never it could never happen. Um, when we reflect on the scripture that is given us today, what God is telling the people of Israel who were in exile around the sixth century BCE can be summarized in these four verbs. What God is saying to them is like first, can you show the next slide? I have created you. I'm the one who calls you to exist. I'm the one who created the whole universe. And then next he says, I have, have formed you. So created is the same word that is used in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, in chapter 2, God formed human out of the dust on earth, right? So God uses the same word saying, I have formed you. I have formed you. I have formed your community. And third, God says, I have redeemed you. You and you were the slaves in Egypt. I'm the one who saved you, who called you out of that. And fourth, it says, I have called you. I have called you to exist. I have called you with a purpose so that you can do my work in the world. Um, so how should we, how are we supposed to understand this? Um, I think we should not misunderstand this passage in a way, in a very selfish way. I think we have to acknowledge and admit that in our Christian tradition, this passage has been misused and misunderstood in a way to think that we as Christians are favored or we as Israel or we as a group is favored by God and God is with us over against others who are different from us. But I believe that's a, that's a total misunderstanding of this passage. I believe uh, we, are, we need to understand what kind of passage this is. This is a poetry. This is a poem uh, inspired by God, a poem by the prophet Isaiah inspired by God. And I believe what, uh, what we need to reflect on is this, our relationship with God, who we are in our relationship with God. In that sense, what it says is like, uh, I am with you. I am with you, so do not fear, I am with you. But we have to note that God is not saying, do not fear because everything is going to be just fine. God never said that. God never says like, next year it's going to be just perfect. Only good things will happen to you I'm, because I'm with you. God never said that. And when we look at verse two, God actually says, it will be like going through rivers. It will be like going through the fire. But do not fear, do not be consumed by the fear, do not be drowned by the fear, for I am with you. I think that's the promise we are called to hold on as we are preparing for ourselves for the next year. So what's going to be like next year? Do you feel like it's going to be a good year? Well, when we look around us, Globally, there are so many wars and conflicts around us. Climate change, extreme weathers. When we look at our denomination, uh, next year there will be general conference, and we're going to have to pray for Emily Ali, Emily Allen. She's she's one of our delegates to go to general conference, and we're already split, UMC and GMC. When we look around us, the Bay Area is known for. Uh, we have the lowest rate of going to church in, in our nation, lower than LA and New York. Uh, the Christianity itself is shrinking, right? So do you still believe that it's going to be a good year next year? Well, but still, I think we are called to hold on to God's promise that God will be with us. I have created you, I have formed you, I have redeemed you, and I called you. I believe that we are called to exist in 1909, 
and through the sacrifices and dedication and generosity of Ise and Nise, we're still standing here, we're existing here, and we get to do all these wonderful ministries still. You know, throughout this year, Reverend John did a wonderful report. I just want to highlight that uh, for our last year's angel tree, we fulfilled 25 physical gifts, one online gift and two monetary gifts. For Easter breakfast, we raised $400 and to help support, support the people in Syria and Turkey. Do you remember there was an earthquake? Now we, we helped them. And, and we raised about 1200 to help Hawaii, La Rahaina, and the Bishop of Khan, Khan, uh, Pacific, the Bishop, not our Bishop, but Bishop from the Pacific, uh, the Bishop of the Hawaii sent us a letter. So I, I put it on the bulletin. So I hope you can read that to thank us. They, they are, thank, uh, they, they want to thank us for sending the money to help, uh, the Hawaii relief. For the backpack drive, we overachieved over the goal. So Nico has actually raised our goal. Do you remember that? <laughs> and we achieved that as well. Hotel de Zinc, we, uh, as soon as Anne made the announcement, more than 15 people signed up and participated. I wanted to sign up, but, but there was no space, so I couldn't sign up. So I'm, so I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that we are the church that cares. Not just our members, but we care for the world. The world that needs the message of healing and reconciliation. And I hope that we can continue to be that. You know, as a pastor, I cannot guarantee you or give you sugar-coated lies that it's going to be a good year next year. Okay? I, I think you're not expecting that from me, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say we're gonna be uh, doubled in numbers. If I start to say these things, you have to tell me that. Ray, what's going on? <laughs> but I think, I think what I can tell you is that I believe, I truly believe that we will continue to care. We will continue to care for one another. We will continue to represent the love of God that is revealed in, in the scripture. We will continue to care for the world that needs, that really needs this message of healing and reconciliation, peace and love. So friends, let us continue to care. Let us continue to care for one another and care for this world. Amen. Now I would like to invite you for communion. All right, so let me remind you that we are doing open communion. It means we believe that God's table is prepared for everyone. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be perfect. Just come as who you are and receive this gift from the above. We know how easy it is to do exactly the opposite of what we learned from our teacher, Jesus. So let us draw near to our God, for in confessing our failures, we will discover the grace and mercy God has in store for us. Join me as we pray, saying together, when we come to the edge of your holiness, constant love, we know how we have not lived as your children. We dam up ourselves, your rivers of love, while the lives around us turn into deserts of loneliness. All too quickly, we place our feet on the quicksand of fear, not wanting to step across to your faith. We tie up our angers and worries and burden our families and friends with them. Forgive us, listener to our hearts, by your patience, grace. Give us more time to practice our calling to discipleship, so we might learn all we need to live as sisters and brothers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the good news. God hears you. God forgives you. God is with you as you journey into that land called promise. Will you join me? Let, Let the, the redeemed, redeemed of God, God say, this is indeed great news. Accepting, accepting God's word of joy and grace, we will live as God's children in all, all the days to come. come. Amen. Amen.
We offer our gifts in gratitude, Holy One, for all your blessings in our lives. Use them to touch the lives of all who stand on the edge of hope, of peace, of community, that they might step into these promises of your, yours with confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. May creation's guide be with you. And also with you. Weary wanderers, offer your hearts to God. Who takes us by the heart to lead us back to faithfulness. Do not hesitate, but step forward in joy into God's life. We will do so singing to the one who immerses us in hope. Standing at the edge of chaos, you cried out, exalted love. And all creation sprang forth from the goodness of your word. Grace overflowed from your heart, racing through the deep valleys of hope, creating us in your image, breathing life and joy into us. You drew us near to you so we could live in joy with you. But we chose to wander through the deserts of death, paving over Eden's promise with our sins. Like a parent with her children, you encouraged us to change, sending the prophets to bring us back. But we would not listen, tying up the burdens of our lives and putting them on their backs. Then you chose to send Jesus to be the witness to your never-ending love for us. So with wanderers and witnesses, with those who cried out to you, and those who have followed your promises, we lift our songs with our sisters and brothers who forever sing your praises. Please join me. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of steadfast love, all creation overflows with your grace and mercy. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who calls us to humble service. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy creation's guide, and Jesus Christ, your son, our teacher, is the one who comes to redeem us, sing the barren lives we lead. He came to till the rich soil of your hopes and dreams, that it might bear life in us. Watching us stumble along sin's side streets, he takes us by the hand to lead us to your fist. When we would allow our pride to become entangled with death, he gently takes this burden from off our shoulders, carrying it to the cross and leaving it behind in the tomb as he strides forth into the promised land of resurrection. As we remember his words and witnesses, as we would let his teachings shape our lives, we speak of what we believe. Great is the mystery of faith. Please join me. Christ, Christ was sent to be God's, God's witness. witness. Christ, Christ is our teacher of the way. Christ, Christ will come, come to welcome, welcome us home. home. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon those gathered from every corner of the world and upon the, the gifts of the bread and the cup as your grace fills us. May we go forth in thanksgiving and humility to feed the hungry around us as the cup turns our parched souls into fountains of hope. May we overflow in service to those who wander in our midst. And when all time has ended, when the truly humble find themselves seated beside you at the table in eternity, we will join our voices in thanksgiving to God in community, holy in one. Amen. When Jesus was having his last meal with his friends, his disciples, he took the bread, gave thanks to God, blessed the bread, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, which is given for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you, the blood of new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. As we partake the bread and wine, the small wafer and little bit of grape juice, we remember, we remember the love that is poured out for us. 
and we made the dedication that we will do the same. We will continue to share the love with the world. Thank you. If you are able, would you stand for the last hymn? Uh, we will just sing one verse. share this blessing may you go in peace um, knowing that God is always with you as God promised to do so oh, will you please join me in the sending forth on the screen go forth as God's people into the world we will, we will go to, to serve, serve those who stand, stand at the, at the edges, edges of, of life. life go forth as sisters and brothers of Jesus we will go, go to, to teach, teach the world the ways of peace and hope. Go forth as those filled with the Spirit. We, we will go, go to, to share our lives with everyone, everyone we meet. Amen. Go in peace.